Hello, fourth grade, and welcome to lesson two of social studies. We're continuing with our chapter on the Midwest. This lesson is titled, Why Did Different People Move To and Through the Midwest? In this lesson, you're going to use your investigative skills to explore what, what influenced the movement of different groups of people to and through the Midwest during the Western expansion of the United States. By reading and taking notes about what influenced the movement of different groups of people to and through the Midwest, this will help you learn more about how the United States has developed over time. Now let's go ahead and begin reading our lesson. And then we're going to begin with our graphic organizers on the following pages. As always, we're going to go through the blue bar on the side. Look at the title. What do you think this text will be about? Circle important dates that are in the text. Underline clues as signal ways that the core of discovery carried on its mission. For number two, how did the core of discovery carry out President Jefferson's goals and the expedition for the expedition? And number three, what were the results of Lewis and Clark's expedition? Which results of their expansion do you think was most important? The Lewis and Clark expedition. In 1803, President Thomas Jefferson sent Meriwether Lewis to lead an expedition into the west part in, into land west of the Mississippi River. This land was known as the Louisiana Territory. Jefferson wanted Lewis to make contact with Native Americans who lived there and to find a water route to the Pacific Ocean. Jefferson also asked Lewis to document the expedition's findings. Lewis asked William Clark to help lead, uh, to help lead the members of the expedition, which was called the Corps of Discovery. The expedition started in 1804. The group traveled from St. Louis, Missouri to the Pacific coast and back. Lewis and Clark kept detailed journals of their trip. The journals documented their daily activities and interactions with Native Americans. In April, 1805, Lewis sent President Jefferson a letter from Fort, Ma from Fort Mandan in present day North Dakota. Lewis also sent several boxes and trunks that included animal skins, bones, plants, and dirt samples along with an invoice or list of these items. The Corps of Discovery did not find a water route to the Pacific, but Lewis and Clark found many other things. The journals described at least 120 mammals, birds, reptiles, and fish that Europeans had never seen. They also listed at least 182 plant species. A map of the, Missi of the Missouri River drawn in the journals was the most accurate map of the river available until the 1840s. The information they provided and the relationships they made helped lay the groundwork for Americans to move and settle west of the Mississippi. Primary source. Dear sir, herewith enclosed you will receive an invoice of certain articles which I have forwarded to you from this place. Among other articles you will loosely, you will observe by reference to the invoice 67, specimens of earth, salt and minerals, and 60 specimens of plants. These are accompanied with their respective labels expressing the day on which uh, obtained, place where found, and also their virtues and properties when known. By means of these labels, references may be made to the chart of the Missouri forwarded to the secretary at war on which the encampment of each day has been carefully marked. Thus, the places at which these specimens have been obtained may be easily pointed out or again found should any of them prove valuable to the community on further investigation. Lewis and Clark wrote notes and made sketches on their journey. So this was an excerpt from a letter written by Lewis where he explained that he was sending a list of everything they found and where they found it in case it was found to be valuable, someone could go back to that same place and find it again. Now let's take a look at our graphic organizers. So for this particular graphic organizer, we're focusing on chronology. And chronology is when you're looking at the order that things happened. Now, when we're talking about chronology, we're talking about things that are happening in time order. So we read the text all the way through. You can reread and watch for specific dates and signal words and events that the text presented in chronological order. Take a look at the maps and the images and examine those and then connect the information to the results. So based on what we read, we're going to complete this graphic organizer. 
They gave us an event. We have to write the date and what the result of that event was. So the event that they provided us with was that President Thomas Jefferson hires Meriwether Lewis to lead an expedition into the Louisiana Territory. Now, back when we look at our readings, we found out that that happened in the year 1803. So we're going to put 1803 over here. And the result was that Lewis asked William Clark to help him lead what we know, what was then called the Corps of Discovery. Now we're going to read pages 194 to 203 in our textbook, and we're going to list three different events, the dates they happened and the results. You do have more than one option that you can go with here, but we're going to uh, fill it in as we go along. Upper Mississippi Valley. In 1673, two explorers from France led an expedition into what is now the, mis the Midwest region of the United States. Jacques Marquette was a priest and Louis Joliet was a fur trader. They are believed to be the first European settlers in the Midwest. Their exploration started at Lake Michigan on May 17, 1673. They traveled in canoes on rivers through what is now Wisconsin. When they reached the Mississippi River, they paddled south to Arkansas. They felt that they had traveled far enough to confirm that the Mississippi had flowed all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. Then they returned to Wisconsin. During their travels, Marquette and Joliet gathered information about the land and natural resources. This knowledge helped the French set up a vast network of fur trading posts in the Midwest. Using the rivers and the Great Lakes, French trappers shipped beaver uh, pelts from the Midwest to Montreal. Now let's take a look at our map that we have here. We have 1803, Fort Dearborn, Fort Dearborn is established on the site of modern day Chicago. 1804, Lewis and Clark began their expedition of the Louisiana Territory. 1837, John Deere invents the steel plow. And 1862, the Homestead Act passed into law. In 1876, uh, the Battle of Little Bighorn is fought. And here we can see our illustration. Marquette and Joliet were assisted by Native Americans. So you can see them over here with the Native Americans on this canoe. Jean Bast Baptiste Point du Sable also explored the Midwest. Du Sable was born in Haiti. His father was French and his mother was Haitian. In the early 1770s, Du Sable sailed from New Orleans to the, up the Mississippi to what is now Illinois. He married a Potowatomi woman there. He continued traveling until he reached the mouth of the Chicago River at Lake Michigan. He settled there around 1779 and operated a trading post and farm. He settled eventually, uh, the, his settlement eventually grew to become the city of Chicago. early settlement. After the first explorers traveled the Midwest, more people became interested in the land. When the United States gained land east of the Mississippi River by winning the Revolutionary War, settlers began moving west. The areas surrounding the Great Lakes, Great Lakes became known as the Northwest Territory. The Northwest Territory. In 1787, before the United States adopted the Constitution, Congress passed the Northwest Ordinance. This law provided, the, provided a way to govern the lands of the Northwest Territory. It included a Bill of Rights that was protected, that protected individual rights. It also outlawed slavery in the territory. The ordinance outlined a plan for how the territory could become states. Over time, as more settlers moved to the territory, it was divided into states, into the states of Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Early settlers were eager to move to the land west of the Appalachian Mountains. Relations with Native Americans. The Northwest Ordinance did not allow settlers to take land from Native Americans without their permission, but settlers often claimed the land anyway, and tension grew. In the late 1780s, Native American groups began fighting with the settlers in Ohio. The British, who still had forts and soldiers in the Northwest Territory, supported the Native Americans' fight. 
At first, there was not enough American army troops in the area to fight the Native American groups but the Brit and the British. Soon the United States sent more soldiers and the army began to defeat the Native Americans. In 1794, Britain promised to leave the area. In 1795, the United States and the Native Americans signed the Treaty of Greenville. This ended the fighting. As part of the treaty, the Native American groups gave up land. The War of 1812. Although the British agreed to give up their forts in the Northwest Territory, they still trapped and traded in the area. The British also tried to block French from trading in the United States. These were some of the factors that led to the War of 1812 between the United States and Great Britain. Battles were fought on the East Coast and on the Great Lakes. Many Native Americans fought on, on the side of the British. The war went on for a, little more than, for a little more than two years and neither side won a clear victory. The war ended when Britain and the United States signed the Treaty of Ghent in 1814. So let's stop and take a look at our graphic organizer. Now, an event that we can put here can include that Congress adopted the Northwest Ordinance, and that happened in the year 1787. And as a result of that, more settlers began moving west of the Appalachian Mountains into, that, into what is now known as the Northwest Territory. Biography, Tecumseh. Tecumseh was a Shawnee leader. He tried to unite the Native Americans in a confederacy against the settlers who were claiming Native American lands. His brother was a religious leader called the Prophet. Together, they, found, they founded a town called Prophetstown in what is now Indiana. In 1811, American troops camped close to Prophetstown. Tecumseh was far away trying to build his confederacy. During this time, the American army led an attack on Prophetstown, and Prophetstown was destroyed. Tecumseh fled to Canada. There he led Native American troops fighting on the side of the British in the War of 1812. He was killed in, a ba in battle in 1813. Crossing the Mississippi. More settlers moved into the Northwest Territory. Soon people wanted to expand beyond the Mississippi River, but they knew little about the land to the West. Lewis and Clark. In 1803, the United States bought the Louisiana Territory from France. This was called the Louisiana Purchase. It doubled the size of the country. President Thomas Jefferson chose Meriwether Lewis and William Clark to lead an expedition through the land. In May 1804, the Corps of Discovery set out from St. Louis, Missouri on the Mississippi, on the Missouri River. They stopped for the winter in North Dakota. In April 1805, they resumed their journey. With them was Sacagawea, a Shoshone woman who served as a guide and interpreter. When they reached the Rocky Mountains, they realized there was no water route to the Pacific Ocean. With the help of Native Americans, they crossed the mountains in November, November of 1805. They first saw the Pacific Ocean. During the next spring, they began their journey home. The Corps of Discovery returned to St. Louis in September 1806. The information they gathered encouraged people to travel farther west. Sacagawea traveled with Lewis and Clark on their expedition as an interpreter. Moving the Great Plains. The land west of the Mississippi River offered new opportunities. Many pioneers headed west on wagon trails, including the Oregon Trail. Pioneers had to decide whether to settle on the Great Plains or continue farther west. At first, most of the pioneers traveled farther. When gold was discovered in California in 1848, even more people went to the west. To encourage settlement on the Great Plains, the United States government passed the Homestead Act in 1862. The act allowed the head of family to claim 160 acres of land on the Great Plains for a small fee. After farming the land for five years, the family could buy the land for another small fee. Life on the Plains. The Great Plains did not have a lot of trees and rocks. Settlers had to be creative with the materials they used to build houses. Many people built houses with bricks made of soil and grass known as sod houses. Living on the Great Plains was hard. Windstorms and prairie fires posed dangers. Insects and worms lived in the bricks of sod houses. The land was very hard to plow. 
1837, John Deere invented a steel plow. It was lighter than the cast iron plows, but strong enough to break through the soil. Settlers on the Great Plains built homes out of bricks made of soil and grass. All right, let's pause for a minute and go back to our graphic organizer. So in this next one, we can put in that Lewis and Clark returned from their expedition in the year 1806, and that people on the East Coast learned more and more about the land that was west of the Mississippi River, and they began to move even farther out west as a result. And for the last one, we can put the, that Congress passed the Homestead Act. This was another major event, and this happened in 1862. And because of the Homestead Act, many people moved to the Great Plains because the Homestead Act offered settlers 160 acres of land of the plains if they decided to settle there. On the trail with the pioneers. As any settlers journeyed westward, many as settlers journeyed westward, many traveled overland by wagon. Early settlers followed the trail made by migrating animals and fur trappers. The settlers had to bring everything they needed with them. They had to have the skills to survive on the land on their own. As more people traveled over these trails, they established a few towns, forts, and trading posts. Animals. Most wagons were pulled by a team of two or more oxen. These animals were strong and reliable. They ate prairie grass along the trail. A yoke would hold the, uh, the oxen together. Tools. Pioneers packed tools to make wagon repairs along the trail. They needed saws, mallets, and axes for building their new homes. They also needed farming tools like plows and shovels. Pioneers brought dressers, tables, and chairs. However, if the wagon was too heavy for the animals to pull, or if, these, or if there was a deep river to cross, furniture might be left behind on the trail. The same was true for luxury items such as books, musical instruments, and fine dishes. Families would bring pots and pans, spoons and ladles and metal plates and bowls to cook dinners. They needed matches to light the fires. They used fresh water from rivers to cook and found uh, to cook food and to wash dishes. Blankets and clothing. Families would, would bring blankets and clothing for warmth on the journey. They slept on the ground or in the back of the wagon. Pioneers also bought the clothes, brought all the clothes they owned. Families tried to pack enough food to last for the entire journey west. Basic food supplies included flour, salt, sugar, coffee, molasses, cornmeal, rice, bacon, and lard. Native American impact. As settlers moved westwards, they claimed land, lands along the occupied, native, occupied by Native Americans. This caused many conflicts. The US government offered treaties, but few of these helped the Native Americans. Also, many settlers ignored the treaties and, continue, and conflicts continued. In 1851, Congress passed a law that created reservations, which are areas of land set aside for Native Americans. Often the reservations were far from the lands where the Native Americans had originally lived. Even so, many groups were forced to move. During the construction of the railroad in the Midwest, Native Americans experienced another hardship. Buffalo were hunted to feed the workers. After the railroad was complete, many people arrived to hunt buffalo for sport. This led to a huge decrease in the buffalo population. Many Native American groups that relied on buffalo struggled to survive. Battles for land. In the Treaty of Fort Laramie, the American government promised land in South Dakota's Black Hills to the Lakota. The Black Hills are sacred to the Lakota and other Native American groups. When gold was discovered in 1875, the United States broke the treaty and allowed settlers on the Lakota's land. In 1876, more than 10,000 Native Americans left their reservations and gathered along Little Big the Little Bighorn River in protest. The government ordered the Native Americans back to their reservations, but they would not leave. On June 25, 1876, General George Custer and his troops arrived. He hoped to force the Native Americans out, but he was greatly outnumbered. The Native Americans defeated the soldiers and killed Custer in battle in the Battle of Little Bighorn. Tensions grew 
between the Native Americans and the US government. More battles took place, including a massacre at Wounded Knee in South Dakota. There, the United States Army killed more than 150 Native Americans, including women and children. As the years passed, more Native Americans were forced onto reservations. Their lives were not easy, and the land set aside for reservations was often difficult or impossible to farm. Many Native Americans suffered poverty and despair. That takes us to the end of the reading for uh, lesson two. Once you've completed your graphic organizer neatly, you're going to go on to your writing pages under where it says write about it, explain how did government actions encourage people to move to the Midwest in the 1800s. So think about some of the opportunities that they created that made people more interested in moving out there. For the right and cite evidence, how did the Homestead Act influence the movement of different people in the Midwest? Use the text to explain your response. So here you want to explain what the Homestead Act was and what it offered and how it affected the lives and not only the settlers, but the lives of the Native Americans that already lived in those areas. And then where it says connect to the essential question, pull it together. How did the events that led to the settlement of the Midwest reflect the spirit and change of America in the 1800s? Here you can talk about their desire for land um, and how far they were willing to go to claim land, even if it was not necessarily land that was available for them to claim. That takes us to the end of this lesson. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing day, fourth grade. Take care. Bye-bye.